they call. You might have seen the um, the latest um, Windows 10 commercial. Let me make myself very clear. I'm not fighting for Apple, but after I saw them, after I saw the um, commercial, the two butt cheeks, they earned my condolence because they were so technically ignorant. They kept saying um, the exact same phrase over and over again. Even on the new Macs, they don't have that. Even on the new Macs, they don't have that. Even on the new Macs, they don't have that. Even on the new Macs, they don't have that. Even on the new Macs, they don't have that. They were talking about the lack of free um, critical features on, on Mac. Number one, the facial recognition. And number two, the um, touchscreen interface. And number three, voice command base, personal assistant, or so-called um, Cortana on Windows PC. So let me talk about the facial recognition. Boom, logged in. Well, we have had these features for a long time. How many of you have, have used the um, faces feature? On iPhoto, facial recognition is not new for Mac users at all. Been using this feature for all, almost like 10 years, I think. Apple didn't adopt this uh, this technology to be used with the um, security feature of the Mac OS 10, probably because it comes with um, several drawbacks. First of all, facial recognition is not accurate. It's not stable it's just, and it's not reliable. For instance, sometimes when you wear like um, sunglasses or I always uh, wear a mask or you don't give it the um, required angle because um, the accuracy or the uh, precision of this particular technology is determined is largely determined by several factors. First, clarity, angle, resolution, and technology. For example, um, do you remember the Boston Marathon incident? At the time, law enforcement officials were trying to use the um, faces captured by the um, surveillance camera to, to search for faces but they had fell desperately because the images were so grainy. So the accuracy of the, this technology is determined by the, the, the sharpness, the resolutions, the angle, and stuff like that. And there are two different types of facial recognition technology. 2D facial recognition and 3D facial recognition. And the thing is, facial recognition is not safe. For instance, hypothetically, I have the Google Glass. Um, let's say I'm attracted to a lady, or well, I want to know you, I want to know you more. So I use the Google Glass to probably capture your face, and then I can because your face is everywhere. Your face on Facebook. Instagram, your driving license, your ID card, your social security card, your company's ID card. Well, your face is everywhere. Well, I'm attracted to a lady. I use the Google Glass to capture her face without she being aware that I, I was trying to capture her face and I can search for her Facebook. The thing is, when you use facial recognition, in order to unlock your, your Windows PC, Therefore, your face detection data is stored somewhere on, on, your, on your Windows 10 machine. Well, as a programmer, as a hacker, there's a ways to, to get it to hack into, to bypass or circumvent the passcode and get that. And then your face in my hand. So, so that's, that's an example. So first, it's not safe. Your security will be compromised. So I want to debunk 
the notions of the um, the bakshiks that first of all facial recognition is not is not new for Mac. We've been using it for a long time, and uh, we decided not to use this this technology because it's not safe for our customers because our customer securities can be susceptible to hackers can be compromised so that's one thing that's that's facial recognition number two voice command base search engine hey Cortana show me my tree hopper photos she's so helpful what time is it it's 12 19. let's say um I brought this up the safari is watching let's say <laughs> and then it was, my boss just got into the rooms and I said, said things like um, buy this application it disappeared so let me prove it one more time what time is it? it's 12 19 here you go well I got no further things to say but you can solely rely on this you have seen the, one of the box shakes was trying to demonstrate how uh, how to use her voice to command the machine, the Windows 10 machines, to search for certain things. I'd like to challenge her, like from now on, within the next 12 months, if you want to find anything, don't use her hands but her voice only, which is not possible. Because sometimes when we want to do critical search or extensive search, we can't just use a voice. Number three, they were talking about... Kid about a proboscis. Just sketch it on the screen. I don't have a touch screen on my Mac. I'm jealous of that. <laughs> I don't have a touch screen on my Mac. I don't have a touch screen on my Mac. With the touch gesture, my body touch gesture. So I'm going to start with the, uh, the launch pad. I'm going to bring up the, the application thing. Here you go. So with my gesture, I can move this app around with the gesture. So it's, it's, it's really amazing. Okay. Mission control. I can bring up the mission control right there. There you go. I can add more mission control. Go back to the uh, home screen. I can bring up Safari and go to web browsers, go to menus, and quit. If you want to stay competitive on the market, you should have come up with something deeper, richer, more complicated, more sophisticated than just the minimal graphics for children. You should have demonstrated with stylus how to draw an intricate infrastructure of an airliner or a building, probably the World Trade Center before 9-11. Or you demonstrate how to use the um, uh, color drawer or like um, Painter Essential 5. Or you demonstrate how to use the stylus with the uh, SketchUp or AutoCAD. Well, you should have come up with something more than just minimal graphics for children. Because why? Because you couldn't do that. You know what? Having a touch screen is not enough. The touch screen of the, uh, the Microsoft um, Surface Book and the Surface Pro, they lack the pressure sensitivity feature. And the resolution, not the resolution of the screen, not the resolution for human's eyes or human retinas, but the resolution for the stylus is very low, not very precise, not very accurate. Apple has filed a patent suit for the um, touchscreen iMac, this is a secret, in the past, they turned it down because the thing is in, in, in real life uses, in real world taste, we can't stay in the gesture for like 8 hours okay so we tend to like it would be more practical if we stare at the screen and we stare at the gesture and writing something
pen like this for eight hours a day. Probably got like full time job, um, like um, a creative professional or something. And you're gonna have to hold your arm like this in this particular gesture, eight hours a day, and you're gonna feel like the stylus getting heavier and heavier and heavier. It's kind of like within like five minutes, it's gonna be like this. So that, that's fine. You want to stay competitive. And if your prospect is uh, probably um, an elementary school teacher, you know what? You don't have the sportsmanship. At the time when you were in a pickle, you bloody sent your two pathetic employees to the Apple event. You know, the two guys trying to demonstrate how to use the um, uh, Microsoft Office suit for iris devices. The guy couldn't even make a perfectly round circle and stuff like that. So Apple allow them to go there. And then now Apple is in the pickles and then you're doing this. Microsoft wanted to use this particular opportunity as a shortcut and reap all the rewards, but well, not that easy. <laughs> Here is the um, um, what they call um, Siamis, Siamis fighting fish. Here, can you see it? Here. <laughs> As you can see, um, they have like uh, pale, darkened, dull colors. And in general, so they don't dance. Well, the thing is, in Thai, we, we call it bite fish. Bite fish or la gut. La stands for fish. Bite stands for gut. Bite fish. Because when you put two of them inside, well, any kind of container, and they tend to like fight to, to one another and like Mortal Kombat. Fatality. So here's the, the actual Siamese fish. I think I do know what I'm talking about very well, but because I've, I've been having this kind of fish uh, for like uh, for 30 years. Since when I was like six, like when I was a little kid, my hobby was to go out to the um, like um, adjacent canals and um, my hobby was like going out to use the um, strainer to lift the um, guppy. And sometimes I inadvertently caught these types of um, Siamis uh, fighting fish. You can put uh, the Siamis fighting fish in a very narrow container because they don't, they don't move physically. You know, probably in a, even in a whiskey bottle or something and it one feels like self-sabotage or something. So here is the Siamis fighting fish. <laughs> 